Hello, 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 how are you? Welcome back to another coffee break. My name is Ben, this is Astrobiological. This is a bit of an informal series I'm doing that I've uh, developed a liking for, uh, where I mess around in Universe Sandbox 2, uh, ex exploring a range of scenarios. Right now I'm into terraforming at the moment, and I've done a few videos, I've done I think I've four videos to date. Taking coffee breaks is the old standard Darth Vader mug. Gotta take a sip out of that before I get going, because you just gotta have coffee. Ah, beautiful. Good stuff, mate. Anyway, so what are we doing today? Uh, I do, I've done some, a few terraforming, terraforming videos for my channel, and um, they're doing okay. I mean, my channel's not massive or world shattering, but uh, it's a lot of fun, so people watching it. And I recently had a, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, and, eh, excuse me, um, I met an actual viewer for, of my videos who uh, works at my work. So, Sean, how you going, mate? This one's for you. You suggested uh, you wanted to see more Mars, more terraforming of Mars. And Sean actually uh, actually liked the video I did uh, whereby uh, I, I envisioned a, a future solar system where the sun, for whatever reason, has undergone some sort of catastrophe or disaster and it has expanded a bit and the Earth has become uninhabitable and descendants of humankind who have returned from space, wherever they've been, uh, must terraform Earth to make it Earth-like. Well, return to its former glory. So, and I thought I might try and do that with um, Mars today. So, this is Universe Sandbox. That's the solar system out there. I'm going to zoom in slowly, to make it do the whole nice panoramic, dramatic, beautiful, cosmic, celestial, symphony type thing. Just out of pure distraction. What have we here? Oh my goodness, there's Elon Musk's car. There it is, I found it. There it is guys, don't need to, don't need to look anymore. Here it is. Oh, I need to, yeah, there it is. Getting some pretty decent mileage. Where were we, okay. The Tesla Roadster. Now that is the greatest promotional stunt in the history of humankind, surely. But I'm digressing massively, because that's what I do. I'm looking for Mars. Yeah, we're heading toward Mars. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That's a master right here in Australia. Get in there. I read all these uh, annoying lines and things saying to say, bug the poop out of me. Let's go faster. Crash! Ouch! So there's Mars. Okay, so let's just picture some horrible disaster has taken place. And so Mars is already a barren wasteland. The telltale features we know so well. Those huge sealed volcanoes. Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system and the tallest, not the tallest mountain. It's just pipped at the post by Rhea Silvia on the asteroid Vesta. But that's pretty damn tall. It's about just under 22 kilometers tall. Was tall. I always get those mixed up. Forgive me, I'm Australian. We don't have imperial measurements over here, so meh, I don't know. But you get the picture, it's pretty tall. Way bigger, way taller than Mount Everest, way higher than Mount Everest. Now, shut up, man, get back to work. So, Sean wanted to see Mars being terraformed, but in a solar system like uh, my previous simulation, whereby the sun had undergone some changes. So, I'm going to make some changes to the sun right now. Its current diameter is, uh, radius, sorry, is 702,098 kilometers. Mass is one sun, because things are, uh, sun is used as the uh, standard measurement against which other stars are measured. Well, we're a little bit uh, heliocentric here still. We're not an interstellar species just yet. I wonder when we do become interstellar and we meet other races, what's going to become the, the, the yardstick against by which planetary distances or cosmic distances and sizes are measured? Won't be the AU anymore because they'll have their own ver other races will have their own version of the AU, I guess. The AU being the distance between the Earth and the Sun. It's about 93 million kilometers, I do believe. Uh, so it's used as a, as a measurement of distance. <coughs> and um, 
other races will have their own version of the AU, I guess, because they think that their planet is special because they come from it. So, and their sun is obviously the center of their well, little world. Uh, anyway, interesting question, really. In an interstellar, in an in a interstellar civilization, consisting of many races, what what do you think would become a, a unit of measurement, a standard measurement of distance? All right, leave a comment below. That's an interesting question. What do you think? Or on my Facebook group, I'll put a link to uh, my Facebook group down below. You can join that and put up anything you want, really, related to astrobiology or all these kind of topics that I explore and these simulations on my channel. Check out my channel while you're at it. I'm writing the script for a proteins video at the moment. I do the regular videos too, as you might notice, if you are a subscriber to the channel. But anyway, this is getting boring. We're talking about random crap. Let's, just, let's start terrifying Mars. So I was going to uh, change the the dimensions of the sun. What I wanted to do. Right, so we'll show Mars. I'm going to expand the sun's radius greatly. Uh, something's happened. Something horrible has happened to the sun. And it's begun to expand. It could be the very distant future. And with the uh, depletion of hydrogen, which is it's the majority of the sun's mass right now, the depletion of hydrogen and helium has begun to burn heavier elements. And so it's had to, it's forced to expand basically, as it does so. Now, this little expansion would have a dramatic effect. What's the climate on Mars right now? Surface temperature is 47.2. It's very, minus 47.2 rather, degrees Celsius. It's uh, very cold. Surface pressure, 6.46 millibars. It has some atmosphere, a, a tiny fraction of our own. So let's speed time up. The sun's been expanded a little bit. Let's see what happens if we Speed the clock up. Yeah, well, let's go hours, days per second. Right, I want to go years and see what happens. Right. Now, much time has passed. Surface temperature has actually gone up. Mars has warmed up. Now this is an interesting development. Let's see what Earth would be. Earth has. Okay, I've got to find Earth. I'll zoom out a little bit so as to make it easier. There's Earth. Where are you? There. Let's go. Let's see what's happened to you in, this, in all this time. Expansion of the sun enough. What I'm trying to do is basically <coughs> drastically change conditions on these planets. Years per second. Years per second. Surprisingly, it doesn't seem to have too much effect. So let's change things again. Radius, right. You can see that the sun is growing slightly larger. That's obviously the sun in the background. Let's just go. Let's really, let's really crank it up. Over twice its um, current radius. Speed time up. Earth should become a horrible, horrible place. Nope. Right, let's reload the time steps. Whoops. Still working out how some of these things settings work in this game. Whoops, press play, get it going. 
it shouldn't be that temperate. It shouldn't be 24.9 degrees on the surface of Earth right now. It should be uh, baked into oblivion. Which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to annihilate Earth. Earth wants to remain livable. Well, I think I know what's happening here. What I need to do is create a new sim a new simulation. A bare bone simulation. So to do that, I need to find out the distances from how far is Mars from opening distance simulation, solar system now in real time. I need to write this down, Mars, where are you? I've forgotten off hand, it's distance from the sun. Mars, Mars, where in the name of God are you? Alright. Distance from the sun, alright, motion. 1.41 1. AU, and Earth is obviously 1 AU, so with that, I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, nope, oh, sorry. New simulation, new empty simulation, add sun, Let's put you there because it's good as spot as any, add earth, alright earth is, pause the game for now, put earth just there and then we'll put Mars Whoops, 1.41 AU. So if there, let's put Mars should be around about there. But let me move. That doesn't really matter. Okay, so get rid of that. Now Mars is. We can change the distance here, like so. 1.41 AU. Earth. Is up. Got it just right. 1.01 AU, give or take. Okay, so we will set this simulation in motion now. 1.234 and so on and so forth. Days are passing. Now, you got Earth. Mars, let's look at the habitable zone. Just to demonstrate something. The habitable Earth sits squarely in the midst of this green band here. Also, just for sake of things, get rid of the back, the galaxy backgrounds for sake of clarity. So, you see, this is the this is the habitable zone around our sun. Uh, the red zone indicates an area that's too hot for liquid water to exist for water to exist in liquid form at the surface. Uh, green water can exist in a stable liquid form at the surface, and Mars is actually just on the outer fringes of it of our habitable zone, but it's, it's just cold enough out there that water can't exist in a liquid form. At its surface, and hence Mars is, as far as we know, lifeless today. So, yeah. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to check out Earth first, but we're going to mess around with the sun, like I was doing. Yep. Relative to distance. Radius of the sun. Okay. See what's happening here. As the sun expands, something horrible happens to the sun. Earth is now in the red zone, and Mars has moved closer, closer to the sun. The green zone has um, become more pleasant for uh, Mars. So let's see what happens to Mars now. I'll get rid of this. So what's happening on Earth now? Earth wouldn't be amazing right now. Well speed time up a little bit. Temperature's skyrocketing now. You can see my cursor there. Let's just check that you can while we're at it. Whoops. That one I need is yes, okay good. That's all I want to know. You know you best okay. So Earth it's 67.9 degrees on the surface. It's not gonna be pleasant. Mars, what's happening to Mars? Its temperature is also going up. It's actually slowing down though. It's it's quite warm there, but it's 
Yeah, no, it's actually not too bad. The average temperature is around 30 degrees. I believe uh, because its orbit is elliptical, it's actually passing in and out. It's actually uh, moving between the green and the red zones. That's what seems to be happening. So let's just uh, observe what's going on. <coughs> because its orbit isn't perfectly circular, no orbit is, uh, with the exception of Venus, which has a nearly perfect circular orbit. But generally, orbits tend to be elliptical. Now it's moving back into. See, look at that. It's now cooling. Mars is now a, a highly seasonal world. Its temperature is going up into the 20s. Hmm. That's interesting. We can work with that. Now, I don't have the other planets in this solar system for the sake of uh, the simulation running smoothly. The less objects you have running, uh, the, the quicker it can run. And my computer is not, not fantastic. Okay, so Mars' temperature is now going down. It's, it's comfortably in the green, but that's going to change. It's going to head back into the red soon. Let's see what happens there. That is interesting. It's now quite cold. But that's. I predict that's going to go out right about. Start going out. Yep, it's starting to go out right about now. That's. Uh, well, well, well. We could do something with that. As for Earth, what's happened to Earth? Earth has similar fluctuations because its orbit is also uh, elliptical. What's the highest that Earth gets? 40, 41. These are average temperatures. So it wouldn't be that comfortable for much on that lived that currently exists on the planet now. 70 degrees, 74, 75, 76. It's getting into the 80s now, so <coughs> I don't think it would be uh, the hardiest of life forms could exist on Earth. Uh, this this incarnation of Earth, and it's going to peak at ninety one, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four, ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. It's still going up. Okay. Peaks at one twenty six, one twenty seven. Huh. Stay, so that's water's it's beyond the boiling point of water now, so oceans couldn't exist on Earth uh, if it was this hot. But right, Mars. Uh, Mars is Mars is holding on. Alright, so now we can do we can work with that. Let's speed time up a little bit. Let's actually What does Earth look like right now? Days per second, okay. Years per second. Uh, zipping along now. Fairly wild temperature fluctuations on Earth over the, over the eons, over the centuries. Time scales all in the course of years, though. So, I'll slow things down a bit now. That clock zipping around. How fast Earth is spinning? Fidget spinner. <laughs> oh dear. Slow down, damn you. Alright, okay. I'm going 
to focus on Mars. It's the prime focus of our simulation today. What's happening there? Temperature fluctuations. It may be the case that with the sun expanding, uh, its gravity is has, uh, its, its gravity well has been uh, affected, and so the planets may be uh, in a decaying or a decaying orbit, or retreating further from the sun. That looks to be the case of Mars because it's. It's, uh, the ellipticus the elliptical nature of its orbit has actually well, become more distorted since uh, I've, I've ran I sped time up and it's now way further into the uh, the habitable zone than it was before parts of it are it's spending more time within the red but also more time further out in the green but right now I wanted to yeah, slow time down substantially now. Get rid of the habitable. Get rid of you. Get rid of that. Okay. All right. It's currently 25.6 degrees. It's a beautiful day on Mars. What would we want to do? Because Earth has been rendered uh, uninhabitable, so we need to move out. Uh, Elon Musk has uh, his first colonies died in the ass millennia ago, and we've got to head back out there. Mars is now the only viable home for us. So let's go. Terraforming 101. Add water. How would you do that? The easy way. Throw something big and wet at it. I wouldn't do that. I'm going to launch. Pause the game. Because <coughs> it gets really messy sometimes. Small moon. We put the moon there. Okay. We bring a, a large icy object in from the asteroid belt. What's this place called? The Vanquil. Sounds like a pain killing medication. Composition. Okay, we've looked high and low. Big icy ball. Big icy ball. There's an atmosphere no less. I could even terraform that if I wanted to. How's that for another? How about I add a new moon to one of the planets in our solar system and terraform it? What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Okay, so Lavanquil, Lavanquil, I'm going to go Nyquil because that's just, that sounds good. Now, motion. I don't want to do it explode into Mars. I'm going to do. We're going to bring it in after a long, arduous trip ooh, across the endless gulf of space. Some of this atmosphere may actually uh, contribute to the Mars atmosphere too. More at it. How does Mars' atmosphere look? Still, still quite uh, mega. Greenhouse effect adds 1.11 degrees Celsius to global temperature. Albedo, it's um, albedo is a measure of the reflectivity of a body. Um, you can either absorb all um, incoming radiation, oh, i.e., sunlight, in which case it may heat up. <coughs> That's a, a heating factor. Reflects all. Uh, in the case of an ice covered world, it would have a high albedo because it's reflecting a lot of light, it's therefore losing a lot of temperature, and that's an, also another uh, factor in climate. Now, this moon has been popped here. It's approximately how far away are we from Mars? Distance. Um, I knew that. 1,000 kilometers away from Mars. Now we need to slow it down, okay? How would you slow down an object that big? You have to, would have to start from way, way out. Dog bark in the background. That's what they do. We've got two little Jack Russells, yippy little things. But we love them. Right, slow the speed down dramatically. I want the moon to hit Mars. I don't want it to split it in half. So we're essentially going to really, really essentially just put it Gently nudge Mars with the thing. It should break up. Let's see what happens. Right, 10 meters a second. If that's even possible. It's been placed there and held up. A lot of calculations have been carried out over time and it's gotten to this speed on hitting Mars. Let's see what happens. Okay. One, two, three. 
Puff. Now, such an impact. Still while substantial. I don't think it's affected Mars' distance from the sun too much. <coughs> but you can see it's, it added water. It added water. A lot of water has been added. The temperature's gone up a little bit. A lot of water actually. That was a very, very watery body. And Mars is now covered with a global ocean with a chain of islands where once its shield volcanoes were. That is cool. Alright, okay. Because of the uh, pleasant temperature, uh, clouds exist as well. Mars would have its own peculiar climate. But this is enough. We need to get rid of some of that water. And that can be done. Let's just see where Mars is now in the grand scheme of things. Look at that orbit. That orbit was highly elliptical now. View habitable. Okay, so it's currently in the comfort zone. Barely, but it's there. How's Earth doing at the moment? Not so well. Surface temperatures. Stinky. Now, God only knows why it still has water. See what's happening with this simulation. When you <coughs> excuse me, add like a, a, a preset or known body like a, a planet in our solar system, it's actually lost a bit of water there. Okay, that's interesting. For some reason, the first thing that always seems to pop up when Earth loses water in the simulation is this little continent here appears. This is uh, the continent of Zealandia. See that little that island, those islands there are New Zealand, the North and South Island of New Zealand. And New Zealand is actually the visible remaining um, portion of a submerged continent, and that's part of that continent there. So Earth's actually losing water. It should be losing a lot more. But Earth is also protected by one thing that, that prevents water loss from Earth is where are we? Magnetosphere. Magnetosphere um, prevents. I wonder if I can show the solar winds in this. Can solar winds be shown? Oh, sure, let's find out. Let's, let's pause. Um, settings. I'm sure there's a setting for it, but I'm not experienced enough with this uh, this game yet. So I'll get out of here, I'm not going to mess around with that, in case I've stuffed the whole thing up. <coughs> it may actually slow down the performance of the computer, so we don't want that. So there's the magnetosphere. The magnetosphere, basically, what happens is, um, the solar winds from the sun, streaming out every single second of the day, zip, 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 zip out into space and they shoot over Earth like so. We've seen a uh, video of things in wind tunnels and the air flies going over objects. It's essentially what's happening here. Earth, this magnetosphere acts like a, a streamlined shell over which the solar wind streams over us and out into space. Because if the solar wind was able to hit Earth's atmosphere, it would actually strip water uh, and break down water molecules and they would be uh, carried out into space and lost forever. And that's actually what happened to Venus, which isn't in this simulation today. I haven't added it, but Venus is now the way it is. Uh, it lacks water almost completely because, uh, for some strange reason, its own magnetic magnetosphere shut off, and solar rays were able to poof, 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 just essentially just hit it, and, and, and its atmosphere got stripped of water. It has a very thick atmosphere now of carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid, and other nasties because. Um, of in crazy volcanism and um, yeah, essentially that and a runaway greenhouse effect, epic runaway greenhouse effect. And luckily for us, we still have this bad boy around us protecting us. But Earth right now should be doing a lot worse than it is. I'm just gonna put it down to a glitch in the simulation. To be completely honest, I'm not happy about that. Earth should be a barren hellhole. No, I've to anymore though. No city lights disappeared. That's that's something. 
You can see the part of North America is submerged. And it looks like water is being stripped. It appears to be the case, I can't really tell. Ice caps, ice caps have gone. There are no ice caps there anymore. Water loss possibly takes a lot longer than well it would. I'm not a I'm not a god. I can't make these things happen instantly. But I'm guessing that water loss is a pretty um, gradual thing geologically. But the earth is losing water. That's something. That's part that's something I wanted to show you. Or, no, I'll keep the habitable zone there. It's a handy instructional tool. Mars, where are you at? Where are you at, Mars? See me on Mars again. Alright, so we found that moon, we flew it into Mars. And gave it this lovely ocean of water, which is pretty good. Um, if, that, that'd be enough. I can't now. Within this simulation, I can't tweak the actual details of the atmosphere itself. It only works on things like carbon dioxide content and hydrogen. Hydrogen content of the planet, which can contribute to water formation. I'm guessing, but, <coughs> excuse me. But the simulation isn't quite that complex. I wish it was. Uh, Universe Sandbox, Steam, or whoever makes this game, please enable some really fancy schmancy uh, planet engineering in this game because that will be bloody fun and this will be the greatest channel of all time people would watch it then if you're not subscribed to this channel why not um see that subscribe thing down there i don't know where it is but find that and subscribe to my channel all right oh, i would greatly appreciate it that's that's all i can say but yeah help me to help you excuse me coffee break So, Mars' temperature, it's holding on to a temperature, of a, a, a stable temperature. So there's, uh, it looks like there's some water loss, because these, the sea level around these volcanoes is, let's change the lighting so we can see a bit better. View lighting in flashlight. Okay. Olympus Mons. The tallest volcano in the solar system, now the largest island on Mars. Possibly that place there, that volcano there. And okay, so what else is there to see? A lot of clouds, that's good to see. Yeah, Peter hasn't changed. We need to, what I would like to do is increase atmospheric mass. And that can be done. Now, you could either distribute some vast floating pollution generating factories all over this, this ocean here. Or if you're a land lover, you're really, really hung up on land, um, build them here. Probably at the peaks of these uh, volcanoes or somewhere. Oh, and there's actually got some water in it. It's like a little uh, lake inside, inside there. Cool. And you would start cranking out atmosphere like never before and this will take uh, this would obviously be a, a decades or centuries long thing this is not this is no small job we're doing here guys we're transforming a planet okay let's also forget that <coughs> excuse me Mars has uh, substantially less gravity than the earth does make the atmosphere fairly thick before we can that's provided that uh, the mass of gravity can hold on to much of the, that atmosphere. That's one of the problems with terraforming these smaller bodies. Uh, the gravity is being less, substantially less than our own. It doesn't hold on to the atmosphere. It doesn't physically hold on the atmosphere. Whereas Earth does, because it has high gravity. But let's speed time up a little bit. It's got a pretty... So increasing the atmosphere like I've done has just sent the temperature through the roof. 
I'd need to, whoop, which is a bonus really, but I don't really want all of it to disappear, so we need to now vent atmosphere uh, quickly. Let's Try not to cheat. I'm trying to use real world concepts here. I might add. So, yes, okay. So, a lot of the ocean disappeared. This is where we want to be. Now we need to get rid of some of the atmosphere. We can do some of that by locking up um, greenhouse gases such as carbon. Something like agriculture. Or agriculture would do it. Uh, in the form of plants and, and biomass um, sequester carbon for their own uses. But that, you need to do a lot of that. There need to be a lot. How could we keep Mars in this state? I'm gonna, okay, the game's paused. Here's the atmosphere, the greenhouse effect. I want that to go down. To do that, we need to <coughs> reduce some of the atmosphere. Whoops. Oops, well that's it. I'm going way ahead of myself here. Let's have, say, approximately 60% of Earth's atmosphere. 60-ish kilopascals. So, if there's any greenhouse effects, still not, not happy with that. If we increase the planet's albedo, it'll lose a lot of temperature. What happens here? It's going to be a disaster, you watch. Yes, it is. Okay. Whoop. It's lost so much water. Oh, no. No. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. I don't want to lose that ocean. Hmm. Oh, 25. Oh, damn. Back to square one. All that water gone. Bum, 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 bum. Pop. It could be also a factor of its location within. Yes. There needs to be a way of finding a balance between a way that water can be held onto. Because when Mars. Mars's orbit brings it into this red zone here, we're in trouble for a long time, for about half of a year. <sighs> How would we do it? How would we do it? Oh, it's water is back now. It's out of the it's out of that zone. Huh. Because I have decreased albedo again, decreased its atmospheric mass. If I was to increase its atmospheric mass by a little bit. Greenhouse effect goes up a little bit. If I decrease, increase the albedo by a fraction. The temperature is starting to go down. Oh, it's, those island chains are always the first things that appear because they're the highest uh, altitude regions on the planet. But, uh, Island appearing there. Set for temperature is 83 degrees. Atmosphere is fairly thin, but I guess it would be workable. And there are plenty of uh, regions of thin atmosphere on Earth where human beings do okay or are going to at least survive. Uh, just uh, imagine uh, people living in uh, mountain ranges, i.e., like the Sherpas in the Himalayas. They seem to do okay. We could just uh, perhaps modify ourselves to live on a thin atmosphere planet. But I want to try to make, for the sake of the simulation, for the sake of um, being conventional, I guess, Earth as uh, well, Mars, a place, sorry, where we can just essentially just go there and start living straight away without, without having to mess around too much with our own DNA, with our own physiology, and all that sort of jazz, you know. Just, yeah, who wants to do that? <coughs> Medical bills, who needs them? All right, do we need, you know, everything fixed up and modified for us? Can we just 
do our own thing. That was almost political, wasn't it? Hmm. Alright. Okay, so, set temperature. Where are we in the... Now yeah, it's passing into the green. Speed time up slightly. Temperature's still going there. It's, now, it's 54 degrees now. It's, it's pretty comfortable, really. There's plenty that on the earth, and human beings could survive on that. That's, well, that. that's not really an issue. But the only thing that happens is. What I'd like to see is what happens when the Mars moves into the red. So I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Right, it's now in the habitable zone. Silver temperature is 31 degrees. See, this will be the seasons on Mars. Hmm. It's a conundrum. Perhaps. How much, water, how much water has Mars got now? Yeah. Copy that. Check out the dogs, eh? All right, now. Okay, so we'll. I can say that I've made Mars semi-livable, but that's not good enough. I want Mars to be fairly comfortable all year round. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the Garden of Eden or anything, but in a pinch, if things are too bad for us here, we need to be able to just transplant ourselves somewhere else pretty quickly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm not happy with just some little islands because what if uh, millions upon millions of people needed to move there? Uh, there's not much there. And agriculture wouldn't work. The, the climate's too, too variable. Well, 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 well out in the habitable zone now. It's actually pretty far out. I think slightly further than the Earth is, so it's quite chilly there. Let's pause there, see, what's, see what Mars looks like now. I don't think it's going to ice up or anything. <sighs> it does look pretty, though. I'll give it that. It's got that going for it. It'll be a lovely. The ultimate uh, water sports destination, I guess. Not really, if you had a planet like this, that's just all water. It could be used for agriculture. It could be the, an agriculture hub. It could um, power generation, fuel. Um, water can be used to create fuel for uh, spaceship propulsion systems. I don't know, it's just, uh, it's, it's still useful. Uh, I want a place where we can live. Practicality is not the be all and end all of uh, our existence. So it's a, it's a place called home. I'd love to go there. Mars would be awesome. Uh, just imagine seeing, standing on the shoreline of a, a shoreline on Mars and seeing, you know, just waves crashing against a cliff on Mars and a sky that's that this. This, this tinge, this, this slightly reddish tinge, a bit of blue because there's now water in uh, this newly created atmosphere. And just imagine seeing it. Just, oh man, just it sends chills down my back sometimes thinking about it. And we could introduce creatures there. And over time, they'd evolve. New, new ecosystems would appear and would spontaneously arise. This place uh, on Earth called Ascension Island. I think it's in the Indian Ocean. I reckon it's in the Indian Ocean, but it's about 150 years ago. It was literally a barren pile of crap, and um, settlers and other people brought creatures there and just basically just let them loose. 
and plants and things were introduced, uh, farm animals, you name it, and now there are all these bizarre new ecosystems that are fully functional ecosystems, but have been that are essentially artificial ecosystems created by man. And the same thing will happen on any terraformed world where we introduce new life. If the world's rendered habitable enough for something to live, life being what it is, it's and yeah, it finds a way to steal a life in Jurassic Park and it'll make it'll make a go of it and eventually over time you'll have you'd have Martian ecosystems you'd have Martian it'd be Martian marine ecosystems I mean Mars's climate would be its own it wouldn't be like our own climate obviously the climate in this simulation is would be vastly different it, it overtakes it out into this habitable zone you can see the temperature there I don't know if you can read the temperature it's going up now it's heading back towards the Sun now its orbit is is taking it back into this red zone here just for a comparison if things get pretty warm on Mars let's see how warm I can get they get pretty bad <coughs> pretty bad actually around 80 degrees 87, 88, 9, 92, 3, and they start going down. Where's Earth at this point? 133 degrees. This orbit is, in this simulation, um, has a, uh, a lot less variation. It's, um, it's not as elliptical as the Martian orbit. So its climate is staying fairly stable. Whereas Mars would have a, an unstable, a very, um, very varying climate for one of better words better word usage so I can only imagine it, there's something which live there I mean we could even make use of uh, living underground if we live there we could live uh, under the under at the bottom of this this new global ocean perhaps uh, our submarine technology is pretty good I'm sure I'm thinking we could do that this this Mars could be colonized um, Fairly, fairly, fairly easily, in fairly short order with present-day technology. Maybe going ahead a few years, a few advances maybe needed, but it can be done. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still, I, I don't want that. I want, I want, you know, whoops. Okay, so. Managing to hold onto that water somehow. Atmosphere, mass. It's holding onto its atmosphere. It's heading back into the green climate. Going down. Now, what if I want to physically get rid of some of that water? Say we, for want of a better word, Scoop some of it off, you know, you know, get a gigantic bucket and just like tip it over the side. Let's see what happens. Control Z, go down. I mean, not Control Z, minus. Right. Okay, so we've got some land masses appearing here. But if I get rid of some of that water, what happens to the climate? Right, let's, let's just. Let's leave it at that. Okay, we'd have this very large body of land for us to inhabit. I'll get rid of a bit. Ooh. Okay. You see, all right. That's a lot of land there. Let's go down slightly. So, okay, we'll go, oops, sorry, up slightly. Alright, let's imagine Mars looks like that. It still has the clouds and it has the climates, um, a lot of land for us to use, but also a lot of water for us to use, a lot of water. Look, Mars is about a third the size of Earth. Probably all that land would be probably the size of 
uh, the Americas. A bit more. And that will be our smallest ocean here on Earth. Uh, a lot of water. Still a lot of water. Right, so. I'll just load. It's a large motor lump. But it just refuses. No, it really wants just those islands there. We need to get rid of some water. Physically lose the water. Now that's a fair bit of land, we'll stick with that. Alright, a huge, a fairly large continent sized piece of land there. There's even a little, little ice cap down there. Pretty good, there's some islands here. Um, picture this Mars, it could be a, a politically diverse world, there's plenty of land for everyone, really. Um, this big chunk of land here, I guess, would be form the hub of somewhere on this, this big landmass here. The, um, the Martian capital would reside probably along the shoreline. Who knows? Um, that looks that looks pretty nice anyway. I need to slow down. See how this landmass looks. Need to change position lock. Position lock. Yeah. Oops, I don't want that. I want order orbits. Order orbits. No. Anyway, doesn't matter. Climate 25.7 degrees. I need to see what happens to that landmass, those landmasses, when Mars moves into right. Okay. Martian Martin always actually moving around the sun. It's oscillating around the sun. That's odd. It'd be very hard to maintain a stable climate with that going on. No, 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 what have I done? Okay. That's what's happened. I've turned position lock on. I shouldn't have had that on. Position lock is bad. Don't position lock, don't auto orbit. Okay. Month per second. Just that Days per second. Right, climate. What's happening to climate? Uh, temperatures are twenty-five point three. Twenty-five point three. I see you fluctuating a little bit. It's always now taking it. It's staying fairly well out of the red now. It's actually, I think it's always actually taking it away from the sun. It's holding a stable temperature. I guess these things happen. <coughs> it's weird. Hmm. I wonder if. Earth orbit influences the Martian orbital path at any point. Probably not too much. But that is interesting. Let's change a couple of things. I could turn climate on, but it will slow the simulation down, so no, I can't do that. Right, I need to change. How are we going to do this? Auto orbit. I don't want that. Okay, let's leave it at this. It's fine. Let's 
Still sitting nice and comfortably within that uh, green zone. I don't think that now the temperature is not going to change that much. It's there's less uh, electricity in the orbit. You may notice it's more round, not oval in uh, shape or elliptical. I guess over time, it's it's orbit has changed. It's stabilized a bit. And it's with the sun changing, uh, changing up, changing things up at the beginning. The orbits of uh, the bodies orbiting it would have changed, uh, been affected, and Mars now appears to be sitting fairly comfortably at a stable climate, which is pretty good. That's what I wanted. I may have done it. Whoops. Oh, pause. A bit of land still there. That's good. Oh, this is the case. Let's zoom out. Let's find Earth. Earth. How's Earth done? Pretty. I find it very hard to believe that Earth hasn't lost much of that water. I've got to say. Some of the simulation is a little bit dicky. Very hard to believe. Surface temperature 130. Greenhouse effect is 46.6 degrees is added to the temperatures by greenhouse gases. Come on, guys, really? I'm going to cheat. Drink less of water. Or a lot of water, okay? Earth is now officially a dump. There's a bit of water there left. With this simulation, when you add just a random planet, like a, a randomly generated exoplanet, for instance, you can do pretty much anything you want. But when it's like a, like, like I said, a preset planet, like say one of the known planets in our solar system, it doesn't like to mess around too much with the parameters of the planet. So, unfortunately, <clears throat> takes a bit of realism out of it. But for the sake of imagination, we can um, leave realism out of it. I mean, this is not really. A realistic, a realistic scenario, more like a bit of a thought experiment, really. Where does Mars sit distance wise from the Sun now? It's actually 1.53 AUs away from the Sun now. Its orbit is, um, is getting further out from the Sun, which is possibly not good. Well, it's not good. Now I predict that. In time, waterfall. So let's try one th something else. Right. So Mars looks pretty good now. Um, I guess we could say that for a few thousand years at least, Mars would be, yeah, a pretty decent place for us to live. That's a home for us for a while. That's that's fine. What do we give Mars a moon to help influence uh, climate? Because one way in which Mars differs from Earth is also that its core whoops okay composition is not active you can see the core there small iron core a smelling silicate rock composition and we've added a bit of water to the thing just for the sake of the simulation but there's no active volcanism on Mars, no active volcanism on Mars, excuse me, no plate tectonics. Plate tectonics, what is that? If you've not heard of it, it's the a global and planetary process by which uh, uh, the continents, excuse me, move around, uh, float on plates of crust. And we all know the continents, all of us Earthlings who are paying attention at school. You know, you've got your Africa, you got the, you know, the Americas and whatnot. Don't really need to demonstrate that, that too much. And of times, um, these plates, well, the, the, the planets, uh, the continents move around these plates, and at the, the borders and the boundaries between these plates, these lines here, um, new crust is created, pushing the plates along the planet, and the continents actually move around the planet very slowly from time to time. And in millions of years, Earth wouldn't look as we know it now continents Australia is apparently is moving northward at a rate of about five centimeters a year I can I better, better hold on I can actually feel that Ooh, oh god we just went over a bump 
Um, but eventually we're going to smash into Indonesia, which is going to do other weird things, and it's going to cause, you know, all kinds of effects. So in, in millions of years' time, many, many millions of years' times, it's not going to look like the way we recognise it. But you know, there's only so much of simulation you can do. Now, I do wish that they could incorporate those kind of things into it, but that would add a whole new layer of computational messing around and it would just slow things down and my computer couldn't handle it. My computer is a piece of crap. Well compared to uh, some of the more high-end ones at least. It's it's good for what I do. But uh, it's not like a beast by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah. Earth has plate tectonics. Mars has none. Oops. Mars, damn it. Mars has none. Which means... Uh, there's active volcanism doesn't exist there's no continental movement um, no ridges in the ocean deep sea ridges there's no sea floor spreading there's no induction there's no subduction they're all geological terms I often thought about doing a video on plastic tonics but maybe one day I'm not sure people I don't know people tend not to hugely watch those other videos that I make, but I, I do them as a hobby. I just like talking about the stuff. I'm sure somebody gets something out of it. I think a lot of fun doing these universe sandbox ones, I know that much. So you might really wonder doing these. An island chain at the... Let's make the really lighting realistic. Okay, you've got an island chain. Right now it's... It's the Martian equator there. Equator would be. We can see where the equator is directly by. This is the star, no solar attractor, tidal stress, tidal effects. Gravitational speed, no, we don't want to mess around too much with that sort of stuff. Planet's inclination. 1.54 AU. It's gradually getting further away from the sun. Inclination, whoops. Say something. Control Z. Don't do that. Okay. Whoops. There's amazingly stuff around with Mars's climate here. I can't undo it, but you get that. <clears throat> Not that anyone's living down there at the moment, right? So we can do what we want. I am God. Seem to be experiencing many extremes of temperature at the moment, which I find a little bit weird, but very snugly within that um, green zone that Earth was once in. So Mars would essentially be the new Earth. Earth is declining, falling into chaos. This temperature is going up. It's well within the red now. It's never coming out of it. It's about. A bit closer to the sun now than uh, Venus. Let's see where Earth is now. Let's, whoops, put that in AU. Yeah, it's, it's always elliptical, but it's, yeah, it's it's gotten closer to the sun. It's still closer to the sun. Mars is, yeah, 1.5, it's slightly elliptical. Now that elliptical nature, uh, it, it, it actually matters. Okay, because uh, that's part of our, our seasonal variation as well. We get closer to and further from the sun as we orbit it, and it um, influences climate here. So on Mars, that's a big factor. Anyway, I've terraformed Mars successfully. I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. Now all we're going to do is populate it with buildings and, and people and animals and aardvarks and dingoes and emus and all kinds of stuff. Cities, just imagine cities, ports, floating cities, um, industry, commerce. It's a whole new world for us to wreck, hopefully not. But yeah, well, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Mars. Hope you've uh, learned a little bit about 
how planets work and the conditions for life. Terraforming could teach us about that. Uh, these simulations could teach you about the, what life needs. And because my channel has an astrobiology emphasis, um, I like to explore this stuff as well. I also like to do some videos on um, artificially built megastructures if they're abandoned and had been populated with the creatures that we use either to eat or as pets or as lab creatures or as as pests who take along for the ride and they were abandoned or the intelligent inhabitants perished would life manage to find a way and survive on these things they need like gigantic gigantic say something like the death star you know was built we built something that big and it had and you know, even had its own gravity because it's so big and we disappear. What what forms would life eventually take within such a within such a structure? That's that's an interesting thing I'd like to explore as well. What do you think? Leave some suggestions in the comments. Um, how what paths would life would life take on an abandoned megastructure? And what paths would life take on a newly terraformed planet? I mean, really, there's nothing stopping us from just grabbing anything and just dumping it there and seeing what happens really. It's a whole new world. Some things would survive, some things wouldn't. New things would appear over time. Um, we, we'd be free to modify uh, plants and animals as much as we want really. And uh, what would happen? I mean, this, this has got all this water here. This, this place, this, it could be a, an aquaculture bonanza, this new Mars. Plankton, fishing, fish farming. This this could be the, the food bowl for the solar system or Earth. Earth could be given over to... Instead of... Say we could terraform Mars now and turn it into something like this. Earth, it would be a relief for Earth. We, uh, uh, Mars could be uh, the, the food bowl. It can produce all our food. They may not like that though. I'm not going to get into the political aspects of things. Always some punk who just wants to do things his way. But I don't want to get into those discussions. Look at that cloud there. It's an interesting little. That's interesting. Any uh, meteorology um, people out there? What's the story with that? That's the uh, the southern Martian ice cap. Still there. Doesn't seem to be a northern one that I can see. And this mainland mass and many, many island chains. I reckon uh, I've done pretty good. What do you think? I'm going to just save this one as a little model to mess around with later on. I'm going to call it um, Mars. It's called Mars. Mars and successful terraform. So, all right. I might close up. I guess. I mean, not really much else I can do. There's plenty of other things I can do actually, but within this, I've I've done what I set out to do. I'm going to do screenshot that. Yes, I'm going to screenshot that. And that can be part of the thumbnail for the video. F12. Click. Nice. Nice. That's nice. I like that. That's a better picture there. All right. Talk myself now pretty much. It's a better picture. So, okay, Mars and Terraform. Do you think I should, what planet do you think I should do next? All right, uh, and also thank you again to Sean for suggesting this video. He liked the previous Mars one, so I thought, yeah, I'm into Mars, so let's let's do that. I'm trying to Terraform Venus at the moment, but it's, that's a tricky one. Even within this game, it's tricky. But uh, what else could I do? Um, I'm going to explore Terraforming a lot in these Universe Sandbox videos. Um... Suggestions. Leave a suggestion in the comments. If you're on my Facebook group, leave a suggestion there. Put up a video of you suggesting something. I don't, I don't care. Um, interact with the group. Interact with this channel. 
Tell me more. I want to hear it all. That's what it's all about. Entertaining you and keeping myself busy and drinking cold coffee. Ugh, yuck. Right. I'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. Thanks for listening. Um, there's always something new and awesomely cool to learn in games like this, but just in general. Um, explore astrobiological, the channel. Um, explore science in general. Ask questions, look up, look down, read books. Um, yeah, just think about stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. This has been Astrobiological. My name is Ben, and we are bringing you the universe and playing human. So, see you next time for the next coffee break.